This is obviously a perspective from Southern Response, so it's not the same as all other insurers, but there's obviously a lot of features that would be consistent with uh, the experiences of other insurers. I, I have on the uh, screen there that learnings from complex claims, but I'd also want to emphasise that it's not just complex claims, it's claim complexities, which are quite different things. To co claim complexities, from my viewpoint, are about a whole portfolio of issues rather than individual complex claims. I can get this to work. So the inherent complexities are uh, open-ended insurance cover. Every claim is effectively negotiable and uh, the community, I don't think, appreciates this is the only, the only place anywhere in the world in a catastrophe where open-ended cover, open cover has existed in such a widespread uh, level. 95% of policies had open-ended cover in, uh, in Canterbury and each of those therefore give rise to potential disputes. Extreme environmental factors, as we've heard earlier about ongoing seismicity, large tracts of poor land to the extent that we needed to do 2,000 deep drills, geotech drills, and 7,000 shallow drills. Other damage uh, that's not building damage under, under the insurance policy, increased flood vulnerability. We have nearly 600 uh, rebuilds in, uh, in areas of IFE, uh, 300 for repairs. Uh, Legacy environmental issues, contamination and heritage, heritage sites. Um, we and our, our um, project manager, Arrow, have already been uh, in trouble in regards to uh, heritage sites, digging up a heritage site without the appropriate uh, authorities. But there's 700 properties that we um, have responsibility for with contamination and another 700 with, with, um, with, her with heritage site uh, allocation. The continued flow of claims from EQC it's an inevitability, but it's certainly ca causing customer stress. The two-tiered cover, EQC and private insurers, there's good sides and there's bad sides to it, and hopefully the review of the Earthquake Act will bring about a lot more coordination than existed before. And the customer base themselves and their increasing issues or, and the complexities of their issues over time, both in respect of complex bills, but also increasingly tense individuals. Just a perspective of Southern Response's portfolio, um, 56,000 claims. Um, this uh, this uh, event for, for AMI was 300 times larger than the second largest event it ever had in its 80 years history. But, um, but probably the most important amongst these are the 7,300 odd uh, overcap claims, which is really where most of the action is. 78% um, of the claims have been settled, but that's a little bit of um, smoke and mirrors because the majority of those are in respect of out of scope claims and, and others rather than um, the real grunty stuff which is the, uh, the over cap claims, houses, people's houses, of which we've now settled 57%. Um, this is an indication of what's happened with the flow of claims from EQC um, and I could almost quote the number of claims we had right through 2013, about 6,775. It moved to 6,778, 6,785. Then suddenly at the beginning of 2014, it began growing as EQC carried on with their, with their scope of works and it's now sitting at 7,350 with an expectation of another three or 400 to uh, yet to come. We're engaging very well, by the way, with EQC in respect of that. Um, EQC are doing all they can to create a soft landing for customers, but the inevitability is that these customers will be stressed. They will have um, tensions that didn't exist with the early customers in the system. The community forums we've been involved in, uh, that's um, uh, individual forums uh, at uh, uh, New Brighton, places like that, uh, where we generally have good, uh, good interaction with customers, a few odd people who uh, don't uh, don't treat those sessions with respect. A coordinated uh, support from various community groups, CANCERN and CTAS, Brian Parker speaking after, after me, I think. Uh, and I've got to say about um, CANCERN, but I also in particular about Le Leanne Curtis, my view is she is the hero or heroine of this recovery from my viewpoint in terms of the, uh, the extremely sensible input that's received early on in the face of adversity and criticism, but now I think her, her position and Cancern's position, position is being widely accepted as being middle of the road and, uh, and very responsible. We've had targeted re rebuild and repair workshops, which has taken people from a position of, 
uh, possibly bewilderment or, or ignorance to one of understanding what, uh, what the next steps are. We've dealt very constructively with MPs from each side of uh, uh, the parliament and their staff, and that's been uh, an interesting opportunity to share. And of course, our never to be forgotten protest movement on, uh, who remembers the date, the 2nd of December and the 16th of December in 2013, where I was surrounded by 100 angry men. Um, that wasn't a very pleasant experience, but what a... Thanks, Hugo. <laughs> um, and the, the, pro the protest movement, it actually did create um, uh, uh, good learnings for us and good learnings for the community. And the majority of the claims that, that, um, that were, um, that where people put forward their uh, grievances on that day, which I think was 110, have been resolved now, but of course some of them haven't been resolved. Uh, our response to the complexities, oh, there's too much on this slide, but an, an issue called qualitative easing, which essentially means our preparedness to be more accepting of credible alternative evidence from, uh, from our customers and their, and their specialists, their technical specialists. Uh, we've undertaken um, independent review of disputed claims. They've got a dedicated team with access to independent experts, so we can supply those experts to our customers if they don't have it themselves, but they are independent, and assisting a, a, a customers obtaining their own independent advice. Encouragement of the Residential Advisory Service, uh, Southern Response was the organisation that was most supportive of RAS, and uh, we were the, the, the very much very willing funder in 2013 and 2014 and extended it to funding any engineering that was required from, uh, from our customers to be able to take, a, I guess, a counterpoint from us. An internal solutions team looking at individual one-off issues and our customer support team which um, is responsible for the, all the vulnerable people. And uh, look, this is an indication of how, the, of, in terms of our entire portfolio, how we've identified vulnerable people. And um, this, you don't need to sort of get the details, but what those uh, the, the items being circled is six months apart, September 2014 and then uh, March 2015, the number of cases that have, have contracts signed in construction or maintenance. So we're fairly pleased with the, the progress of those, of those customers with great difficulties. Uh, th this is the ones just with 130 claimants. And so the, six, the 500 are people who needed support. These are people who can't do it themselves. These are people who, who really were beyond the ability to be able to um, manage the construction or repair of their own house. And even with those, so we've moved from September of a, a relatively small number in either contract signed um, construction or maintenance to a substantially greater number now. Not as many as we need, but certainly moving, moving forward very positively. Uh, partnership issues amongst insurers. This is a depiction that we used on a different occasion for, uh, for, for um, uh, multi-units. Uh, the, the sort of issues associated with multi-units is uh, all insurers have a different position in the first instance. They needed to come together and be able to create a, a single position in respect of individual uh, complexes. The, the EQC declaratory judgment, which had an effect on, um, on uh, the, um, the flooding is issues in respect of uh, th those units. Complex regulations, we're, we've been very much involved with the Crosshurst City Council District Plan Review to try and overcome or address some of those uh, complexities in regards to multi-units. And the bugbear of, uh, of either under or no insurance or, or some customers cash settling or insurers encouraging customers to cash settle when the other houses haven't cash settled and how the hell do we move on from there? All significant complexities, but ones that are being addressed by the insurance industry collectively. Other examples of uh, industry cooperation, the district plan review, both the multis and the, and the most recent uh, flood hazards, um, joint efforts to improve customer experience in the, in the recovery by, by regular fortnightly and now monthly meetings amongst the GMs of all insurers seeking to get a co coordinated approach. Uh, retaining walls and land surveying, a, a united response, certainly in terms of the most recent problem we had with Linz putting out some uh, peremptory uh, guidelines in regards to a change approach by uh, surveyors to uh, surveying boundaries. Uh, the future significant challenge to, challenges to be addressed is our repairs portfolio, not moving the speed we want, 
There's disputed methodologies, inadequate communications from us, uh, first to admit, so we're doing stuff to improve that. And of course, the customer preference to, for a rebuild where the existing house can be repaired at a policy standard. Uh, most people want a new house rather than their existing house. Uh, the multi-unit progress, ensuring that customers who don't even know each other but happen to live in the same uh, complex, getting agreement amongst each other about the rebu rebuild of their house and, and dealing with any complexities that might exist. Court capacities issues, spurious court actions delaying progress. One lawyer has 86% of all outstanding claims in the High Court. 66% of those are under cap and all recent notifications. And Southern Response is actually working with EQC in respect of our joint portfolio of those under cap, over cap claims to try and address that phenomenon. So if you look there, of, of all the cases in the High Court that haven't been settled as, as at the February 2015 list from the High Court, there are um, 210, of which 180 are from the same plaintiff lawyer. So I mean, that might be a, quite an appropriate phenomenon. It may be that, that all the insurers are bloody hopeless and don't do things anywhere near as well as they should. But what it does mean that the current rate of progress of settlement of those claims, it'll be 10 to 20 years that the High Court will be clogged up. So there definitely needs to be another, another means of resolution to, um, of, uh, of claims in respect of that particular plaintiff lawyer. And uh, apparently a quote that was dragged up for me from Abraham Lincoln, discourage litigation, persuade your neighbours to compromise whenever you can, point them out how the nominal winner is often the real loser. I've got to say about compromise, we do have a problem with compromising when we're of the view that a property is worth $500,000 and some individual customers, and particularly that plaintiff lawyer says they're 1.5 million. A compromise sort of means 1 million, and my answer to that's definitely not. I presume Duncan would have a similar view to that sort of, sort of thing. This is not Dun Duncan Webb is not the plaintiff lawyer. He's another hero in the system from my viewpoint. He's often against us, but in a very respectful way from, from my viewpoint. Um, we support uh, ISO facilitation. We, we're the only insurer with the removal of the, the 200,000 cap on, uh, on uh, the jurisdiction of, of, um, of ISO. RAS facilitation with multi-party meetings. Uh, we're encouraging court mediation and, and, and reputable advocate involvement. I say reputable because there are some uh, unreputable uh, advocate involvement as well. Thank you. Thank you.